Oh, well, hello there. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, why is my dressed in this dope suit? Just kidding, I doubt any of you are thinking that. You're probably thinking that he's got some new kind of video about interview questions, like, is this going to be worth my time? What does he really have to say about this? Like, why should I listen to him? He just said dope. Well, anyways, not only have I been in your position, but I've also, you know, being the applicant and going through several interviews, but now I've been on the other side of the table. Uh, you see, my school lets D2s be a part of the interviewing process, so I've been able to sit in a lot of interviews, ask questions, you know, and evaluate applicants and kind of get, share my input with the, you know, the admissions panel. So, that's right. I'm pretty big stuff now. Just kidding. That's not really a big deal. Anyways, though, but I have learned a lot from it. It's been very eye-opening. So I, I have seen a lot of like common mistakes or things that some people do that aren't so great, as well as some things that people do that are really good, you know, and just kind of help what helps someone stand out. What's does someone have such a better interview than other people? You know, what what gives it the gravitas? <clears throat> I don't know if I use that word right. Anyways, here are five things that'll help you crush your dental school interview, help you prevent some common mistakes or problems and just help you really shine in your interview. So here we go. So tip number one is try and just dress up and look nice for your interview. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out and buy a suit, but if you don't own one or if it's like really bad, maybe you do want to buy a suit. Basically the idea is you just want to look really nice for your interview. You want to show them that you care, that you're taking this serious, you know, and that you're a professional. Like that's what you do. You dress up, you look nice for these things. I've not seen some people that are kind of underdressed and it does kind of show that message a little bit that maybe they don't care as much about it or that they're not taking it as serious as some of the other people interviewing. Now also just good hygiene and grooming along with that. And you're probably thinking like, do I really need to spend time on this? But yes, you would be surprised at some things that I've seen. So make sure that you're just grooming doesn't mean you have to be like clean cut like everything just look like you take care of yourself that you tried to look good for this interview and again basic hygiene we had someone come in that there's kind of a grooming hygiene -ish issue and they did a pretty good job in their interview but that was very distracting and some of the interviewers like had a hard time getting past that and that kind of was a negative impact on their overall performance you know, something so small that could have, like, been taken care of in just, like, 10 minutes, like, dropped him kind of in, like, the overall rankings of the list. So. Dropped them. Oops. So, yeah. Just try and look nice. Make sure you smell nice or, like, that you have good grooming. Like, that you take care of yourself. And, you know, first impressions are huge. They mean a lot. So, you'll already be off to a great start. Number two. Just try and relax and be yourself. You know, don't overstress this interview. I know it is stressful and it's a, like a very nerve wracking kind of thing, but just try and be yourself. Have fun with it. You know, don't have too much fun. But like, yeah, they just want to know who you are. They want to see what kind of person you are and if you'd be a good fit for that school. I mean, a lot of the questions they ask, there's not really necessarily a right or wrong answer. They're just trying to see who you are as a person. So don't overthink it. There was someone that interviewed that was very nice, I thought would do really well, but had a really hard time in the interview. But I think that's because they were so nervous and they were overthinking it and they were trying to, I think, give us answers that we wanted to hear instead of just saying, you know, like what they would normally say. And it came across like really poorly and made her, made that person have a hard time kind of answering questions. So yeah, again, just be yourself. Just have fun with it. Just say what you would not really say. Like, show them who you are. So number three. So to kind of piggyback off the last one, you know, have fun. Don't be afraid to be different. Obviously, like, don't go crazy with either of these. Like, it's still an interview. Try and be professional. But don't be afraid to kind of show who you are and show things that are a little bit different about you. To be honest, like, they interview lots of people. And, like, it starts to get boring. And you start to, like, <clears throat> not to say boring. Okay. It does, though. It starts to get boring a little bit because a lot of people will say the same kind of answers. And not that those are bad answers. Like, a lot of people say them for a reason because they're good answers. But it's kind of nice when someone is more open or says something a little bit different. Like, it feels a little bit more real. Um, and it helps you get to know them as a person a little bit better. For example, like, if they asked, you know, like, would you ever, after you're a dentist, would you ever consider only working three days a week? 
And if you're everyone like, no, like I love dentistry so much. I want to work every day as a dentist. I'm going to work six days a week. Like great if that's really you, but I bet most people don't probably really want that. You know, that's one of the nice things of dentistry is you can kind of pick your schedule a little bit, but there's nothing wrong with saying like, no, I would, I would like to work only like three after a point. Like I would like to maybe work only like three or four days a week. So I want to spend time with my family. Or let's say, like, I'm passionate about marine biology, and I would love to do that on the side. I'm like, great, you know? Like, I don't know if you can really do that, but yeah, that's that helps you stand apart. Like, that helps you stand out, and that's, like, an interesting thing. It helps us feel like we get to know you a little bit better. So don't be afraid to kind of just be honest and real about them. Don't necessarily have to give them the answer that they want. So there was someone that we interviewed who... They were a dental assistant for a long time, and they used that as an example a lot in a lot of the questions we asked, which was like, great, they've had a great experience, like they should showcase that, but they started doing that for like every question. So after a while, it's like, as being a dental assistant, was that the only time you ever left the house? Like, have you interacted with other people at other places besides that dental office? You know, we want to see that you're a well-rounded person and we want to feel like we get to know you. When you're a little bit different, when you're a little more just honest about your questions, that helps us get to know you better and that also helps us feel like we connect with you a little bit more. We get to see who you are as a person more. So number four, for the love, answer the question. Now you're probably thinking what? But sometimes people will have a tendency, like there's something really great about them or like this awesome story that they wanna share. And sometimes they will use that question to just go off on a tangent about that and not ever really answer the question. So one, that's super annoying as an interviewer. Like, they've spent a lot of time preparing certain questions, and, like, they want to hear the answer to those questions. They want to see what you think about those questions. So when they feel like you didn't really answer that question, that's, like, a big no-no. They don't like that. That makes them kind of annoyed. Now, I get that there's a lot of things you want to share about yourself, especially some of the highlights. Like, you want to get to those things, and that's okay. But just make sure you answer the question before it, and make sure it's like, fits appropriately well with that question. Otherwise, it's kind of annoying. Number five is be confident. They like you. Good news. They like you. That's why they invited you to this interview. They think that you can be a good applicant. Like you could be a good part of the school, like a good part of the class. They can think you could be a good dentist. They just want to get to know you. They want to attach a person now with the application that they already like. So, you know, be confident with yourselves. You deserve to be there. You know, and if you're really nervous and stressful, I get it. It's a stressful thing. If you need to go do some, like, power poses and stuff in the bathroom, like, before your interview, go do it. If you need to kind of chant to yourself, like, I got this, I got this, I got this, like, do it. Whatever you need to make yourself more confident, you know, do it. Like, this is your moment. But also, don't put so much pressure on yourself that you blow it. There are other schools. There are other interviews. Just be confident with yourself. You deserve to be there. Some ways to help you show that confidence, make sure you have eye contact, look them in the eye when you're doing this, um, speak up loud enough that they can hear you, don't be like mumbling or trailing off, and just kind of good potty posture, you know, St sit up straight or like slightly forward, don't be like lounging or like too hunched over, don't be like sh shaking, being like looking nervous anyways, just be confident, you got this. So obviously this isn't a comprehensive list of everything you need to know for your dental school interview. These are just five things that I've noticed from my own personal experience of being in on interviews and just seeing applicants and some of the things that they've struggled with or issues or problems kind of that they've had. So just things for you to be aware of that you can work on. I think I'll also do maybe another video of like how to prepare better for interview the interview, like things you can do more beforehand as well as maybe like a video about practice questions where I can just go through lots of like commonly asked questions or like similar questions, you know, that might be asked. And maybe even show like kind of what my response would be and you guys can compare. I don't know, just something I'm thinking about. But let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments below or if there's anything else I can do for you. And most importantly, before I go, when did you guys notice that my tie has been switching throughout the video or did you notice at all? Let me know when or if you did. That would be just a little psychological experiment kind of thing going on. I don't know. Anyways, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it.